because I'm outside today in this glorious December day in Vancouver, BC. You can believe the sun is shining and everything's wonderful, but there's nothing to do in the garden. The garden has completely gone to bed for the year. It's gone dormant. I don't have a lot of work to do, but I do want to get outside and still get my garden therapy. So I've got some clippings that I've gone around the garden and collected in order to make a wreath for my door. So the first thing that you need to start one of these wreaths is a wreath form. And you can use any kind of wreath form uh, that you have. You can use a wire form, which are readily available. I like using these grapevine forms because they've got that really natural look to them. And this one's about, I guess about eight or 10 inches uh, wide. And you don't want one that's too big because really the determining size of your wreath is going to be how big you make the bundles of greenery to put on it. And so if you use a, a wreath form that's like 12 or 14 inches, you're going to have a giant wreath, which you might want if you want a big wreath on your door like that. So I'm using this one because it's going to be determined by the size of the bundles that I use for the greenery. And it will make a really gorgeous wreath that will sit perfectly on a standard size front door. So first things first, we've got our greenery and I just went around the garden and I collected different things. Um, this is what's blooming in my garden or looks really nice right now. This was this actually wasn't in my garden. This is the clippings from my Douglas fir Christmas tree. And so I just took off some of the bottom branches and I have that available. Here's some Euonymus, which looks really pretty, winter creeper. And I've got some holly with berries on it. I've also got some uh, Saracocoa sweet box with some blackberries on it. These aren't going to stay that nice in the wreath for a couple of months, but the, the holly berries will look really nice. These ones will probably fall off, but the foliage will look really, really good. So the first thing you want to start to do is take um, something nice and firm for the back of the base of each one of the bundles. And so this one is um, nice and firm because it's got a strong stem. And then I'm just going to layer some of the different materials on top of it. So because this doesn't have a whole bunch of variegation on it, I'm gonna start with first the Douglas fir and then the Circoa, and then a little bit of Euonymus on top of that. And then I'm gonna take a really pretty piece of holly with some berries on it and just make a little bundle like that. So then I'm gonna use my clippers here to trim the ends so that it's nice and neat. We could just throw that away and take a little bit of garden twine. I like to use jute twine for this, but you can use wire as well. If you use jute twine, it can compost at the end. So you really can just cut the jute twine off and put the whole thing into the compost. If you use wire, you can take the wire off and reuse it next year, which is great. But it's also a little bit more work at the end of the season, which I prefer not to do. So I'm just tying this first bundle with a couple of knots so that it sticks together really well. And that's the only one I'm gonna tie, like that. So I've tied that one together. I'm gonna put it on the wreath form like this. And I'm keeping my jute twine long so that I can wind it around the wreath form. There we go. Now I'm gonna continue to do that for the entire way around the wreath. So bear with me as we make a wreath using the same bundle many times all the way around. get close to the end now uh, getting close to where we're gonna finish off the wreath I can probably add in about four or five more bundles into this area and I want to make sure that I'm filling it up as much as possible which is good because I'm starting to run out of good selection of plant material so I'm gonna just keep picking the best that I can I'm gonna put it all together and then I'll show you how to finish off the end of the wreath
if it's starting to get close, I think I can still tuck two more in there. There's enough plant material here, but I just want the right shape for each bundle. That way it'll be uniform all the way around. All right, so when we start to get to the last couple, we're gonna lift up the one before. That's the very first bundle that we did. Try to lift it up and tuck this underneath. I'm still gonna put one more in there. Tie this one on. There we go, and I'll put one more in there. Still think it needs one more. Do you want to hold really well in a wreath in this climate? Which is nice because it doesn't turn brown, the leaves don't fall off, and it keeps that really nice variegated color. Something with some berries, a little longer stem. This is the one. But I'm going to turn it upside down because the berries are on the other side. Just take off those leaves, put the ends. Go. Okay, this will be the last one. So lift up. Gently lift this one up. Put this bundle underneath. Tie it as tight as we can. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it around a couple of times, then I'll tie it, turn the wreath over and tie it. Gently. This. Not the right tool for cutting twine. This is the right tool for cutting twine. There we go. So I'm just gonna loop it through here, make a knot. Make a couple of knots. You can even leave this string long if you want to use it as something to hang with. You can make a loop and use that to hang it with. But usually I find that it'll hang just fine on a hook on your door. So now let's clear off the space a little bit and take a look at the wreath and see if there's any spaces that we need to fill in. Just give it a little bit of, move it around a little bit, fill in any of the spaces that look a little bit empty. So I think it's looking pretty full. You can also prune off some of these edges, anything that's a little bit too bulky. But it's all holding really well. I like to hang it up on the door and then once it's hanging, look at the places where it could be pruned a little bit more. All right, the other thing that you can do at this point is add in some dried plant material. So these are some poppy seed pot or poppy seed pods and poppy seed pods, different kinds of poppies. And they look really nice just added in the wreath. You can just tuck them in in various spaces. And it just adds a little extra. You can add pine cones. You can add um, really any seed heads that look good. Little pieces of wood if you want. I think these poppy heads look really nice. And they just add that little bit of extra. I have to keep watching out. I keep poking my fingers with the holly. That's the caution that you have when you're not wearing gardening gloves while doing this. But I find that it's really hard to use the twine with my gloves. So. I do love the feel of the plants. All right, a little bit of poppy in here. Okay, let's see. I think I could probably prune off some of these things, but we'll look at that while it's on a door. And while it's on the door, we'll take a look and see how we can make it a little bit more even, which way to hang it, and I can put this up on my door in my Vancouver, BC garden, and it completely lasts just fine without any preservative, no spraying until March. Usually I'm taking it down in March because it's pretty seasonal and it's time for it to come down for something else, but you can leave it up as long as you want, as long as it's still looking good and smelling good. And it smells fantastic.